The United States is not a free market paradise. Uh, we're nowhere near as pro-market as places like Hong Kong and Singapore. Uh, places like Switzerland and New Zealand are more free market oriented than the United States. Uh, now, that being said, we do tend to have more economic freedom than a lot of countries in Europe. But something else that's true, and this is all from data from the Fraser Institute's Economic Freedom of the World, Europe tends to have a lot of economic freedom compared to Africa, Asia, South America. Uh, so it's one of these things where there's an absolute measure of economic liberty, and then there's a relative measure of economic liberty. On absolute measures of economic liberty, I think there's a lot to criticize in the United States. There's even more to criticize in Europe. But if we're looking at relative measures of economic liberty, well, then I think that Europe and North America and some of the Pacific Rim countries, I mean, those are the, the more free economies in the world. Uh, and, and that's something that we should cherish. Let me, uh, there's, a, there's a slide I think that's worth uh, uh, picking up. It's a challenge that I put to some of my left-wing friends. I asked them to name a country at any point in history that has ever become rich with big government. Or for that matter, I asked them to name a country with big government that grows faster than a similar country with small government. And they can never give me answers to those questions. I mean, are, are there countries that are relatively rich with big governments? Yes. The US has a government that's too big. France has a government that's far too big. But guess what? Both the United States and France, and for that matter, Germany and other countries, we all became rich in the 1800s and early 1900s when government was very small, when there weren't even things like income taxes. Uh, so, so you can become a rich country and then adopt a big government and then you'll start growing a lot slower. But one thing I say when I'm speaking around the world, especially in transition economies and developing economies, I say you have to get the order right. Use free markets and small government to become rich. And then if you want to make the mistake, of adopting a big government and growing slower, well, at le least you became a rich country first. But again, no country anywhere in the world, nobody has ever answered this question to me successfully or effectively. You cannot point to a single country in the world that got rich with big government, high taxes, lots of regulation. It's always free markets and limited government that generate prosperity. And then politicians figure out how they can grab a lot of the, the wealth that's being created and they create big welfare states that cause less growth. What about the idea that many young people and many, many Americans have about Sweden being this paradise of social welfare, where uh, uh, everything is free, all, all public services are free, uh, going to university is free, healthcare is free, and everything works perfectly? Well, if you look at the economic freedom of the world from the Fraser Institute that I just discussed, Sweden relatively speaking, is one of the most free market economies in the world. Uh, there, there are five major things that, that go into measures of economic freedom, things like monetary policy, rule of law, trade policy, regulation. Sweden gets very good grades on every single category of economic liberty, except for fiscal policy. They do have very onerous taxes and they have a big welfare state. So is Sweden as economically free as Hong Kong? No. But by world standards, it has a lot of economic freedom. And going back to what we just discussed, when did freedom become, when did Sweden become a very rich country? From like the 1870s to the 1960s, when government was very small. As a matter of fact, for much of that period of time, government in Sweden was smaller than it is in Hong Kong today. So Sweden became rich with free markets and small government. It then adopted a welfare state. It's now growing slower. But because it's being very free market oriented in other policy areas other than fiscal policy, it's still doing, you know, doing well. I mean, I wouldn't say doing great, but it's doing well by world standards. Uh, I mean, the way to think about economic policy, think about being a student and you're taking five classes. You're, you're taking a language class, a science class, a history, you know, you're taking all these five classes you obviously want to get very good grades in all five classes. But if you get very good grades in four classes and then get a uh, not so good grade in your fifth class, you're still doing okay as a student. And, and that's, that's really a sort of a, 
a, a metaphor for how Sweden is doing in the global economy. 